My name is Sam Todorica, and I'm a PhD student at Stanford University, and I'm being co-advised by Tom Abel and Federico Fiusa. Today I'll be presenting the work that we've been doing in modeling laboratory astrophysics experiments, as well as in developing new methods for plasma simulation. And first I'd like to, or I'm also a Blue Waters uh, graduate fellow, and I'd like to thank the Blue Waters team for the opportunity of having access to Blue Waters this year, which allowed me to perform this research. So here is an overview of what I'll be presenting today. To put our work in context, I'll first talk about the plasma process known as magnetic reconnection, which is uh, thought to be very important for accelerating particles in astrophysical systems. And then I'll talk about the motivation behind using high energy lasers to study problems in astrophysics, how the extreme plasma conditions created at these facilities can uh, be scaled to make a connection to astrophysical environments. Uh, then I'll talk about the results of our simulation study of magnetic reconnection in laser-driven plasmas, where we modeled the laboratory conditions to propose a new experiment to study particle acceleration induced by reconnection. And then finally, I'll talk about some of our ongoing work in developing a new method for plasma simulation that holds promise to improve physical accuracy and reduce the computational expense of these simulations. So the simulations I'll be talking about today are modeling plasma, which is essentially a highly ionized gas with roughly equal amounts of positive and negative electrical charges. And plasmas are very abundant in the universe, for example, in stars, and are thus <coughs> important to study for astrophysical systems. And understanding plasma is also essential for harnessing energy from nuclear fusion power, which has been one of the main motivations for the study of plasma physics. And the presence of long-range electromagnetic fields in plasmas leads to complex collective behavior that is very difficult to describe analytically and numerical simulations treating charged particles interacting by electromagnetic fields are one of the most important tools we have for studying these systems. So a particular plasma process that's very important for astrophysics that we're interested in is called magnetic reconnection. And uh, magnetic reconnection converts magnetic field energy into plasma energy through the breaking and rearrangement of magnetic field binds. And the energy released as the magnetic field changes topology, drives plasma flows, heats the plasma, and accelerates energetic particles. And here is what the process looks like in an ideal geometry. Plasma flows are bringing together oppositely aligned magnetic field lines, which break and reconnect in a thin diffusion region and the tension from the reconnected field lines drives plasma outflows away from the diffusion region like a slingshot. Reconnection is involved in the dynamics of magnetized plasmas in space physics, astrophysics, and the laboratory, and it's believed to play a key role in frontier problems in physics, including the origin of cosmic rays, and is also relevant for applications with societal benefits, such as space weather and nuclear fusion energy. Observations of high energy astrophysical sources, such as pulsar wind nebulae, active galactic nuclei, and gamma ray bursts, often indicate rapid energy dissipation and efficient particle acceleration. And the environment of these systems is often thought to be a highly magnetized plasma. And as an efficient mechanism of dissipating magnetic energy in a plasma, reconnection is a promising candidate for producing the non-thermal particle distributions inferred to be present in these systems. However, the efficiency of reconnection in accelerating non-thermal particles and how this depends on the plasma conditions remains poorly understood and it is still an active area of research to determine whether reconnection can account for the astrophysical observations. And over the past several years, several groups have been using numerical simulations to study reconnection in conditions relevant for magnetized astrophysical outflows. And these studies have convincingly shown that reconnection in these regimes is an efficient uh, mechanism for producing relativistic non-thermal particles with power law energy spectra. And on the right here is the charge density of the plasma with overlaid magnetic field lines from a simulation showing the typical structure of the reconnection region. So the points where the magnetic field vanishes are known as X points, and here the particles are unmagnetized and can be freely accelerated by the electric field associated with reconnection, which points are orthogonal to the plane of the figure. And magnetic island structures known as plasmoids also form in the current sheet as a result of the tearing instability, and these can also have important consequences for the particle acceleration. 
but the relative importance of these mechanisms and how this depends on the boundary conditions and the initial conditions is still not fully understood. And the ability to study this process in a finite size laboratory system could be very helpful for advancing our understanding. As a result of the National Inertial Confinement Fusion Program, high energy laser facilities such as the Omega Laser Facility at Rochester and the National Ignition Facility at Livermore have been developed that can focus kilojoule to megajoule energies onto sub-millimeter spot sizes over nanosecond timescales. And when focused onto solid targets, these lasers can ablate extremely hot and dense plasmas with conditions that reach a regime where scaling laws allow a comparison with astrophysical environments. And motivated in part by these scaling laws, experiments have been performed at these facilities to study astrophysical processes. And here's an example of a recent experiment performed at the Omega Laser Facility where lasers were focused onto opposing solid targets to create counterstreaming plasma flows. And here the plasma is initially unmagnetized and the goal of the experiment was to study the magnetic field generation where the flows interact. And additional laser beams were used to implode a fusion capsule which created monoenergetic protons which travel through the interaction region, get deflected by the magnetic field, and are then collected on a detector, which is an important diagnostic that can be used to probe the magnetic field structure in these experiments. And similar uh, experimental setups can be used to study magnetic reconnection. And over the past 10 years, there have been several experiments performed using laser-driven plasmas to study magnetic reconnection. By focusing kilojoule per nanosecond lasers onto solid targets, expanding plasma bubbles are produced that self-generate megagauss scale magnetic fields due to misaligned density and temperature gradients. And the expansion of two nearby bubbles can then drive reconnection between these self-generated magnetic fields, or alternatively, an external, externally imposed magnetic field can be used. And a number of features of reconnection have been observed in these systems. For example, the change in magnetic field topology and the formation of plasma jets. However, none of these previous studies have addressed non-thermal particle acceleration in these systems, which is one of the most important signatures of reconnection for connecting to systems in astrophysics. So to model these experiments, we're using the particle and cell method, where the plasma is represented by a finite number of discrete simulation particles. And the charge and current densities calculated from the particle positions and velocities are used to solve, used in Maxwell's equations to solve for the electromagnetic fields on a discrete grid that covers the simulation domain. And these electromagnetic fields are then used to calculate the Lorentz force on the particles and the simulation proceeds in this way in a number of time steps. And we're using the state-of-the-art particle and cell code OSIRIS, which has been developed for over a decade at UCLA and IST. And OSIRIS can efficiently utilize large-scale computational resources. For example, here is a scaling test performed by UCLA group on Blue Waters, showing it efficiently running on over 300,000 cores on Blue Waters. And advanced features of OSIRIS, such as open boundary conditions, dynamic load balancing, and high order particle shapes, allowed us to perform the large 2D and 3D simulations that were necessary for this project. And due to the large number of simulation particles required to sample the distribution function in phase space with enough resolution to capture kinetic effects, particle and cell simulations are very computationally demanding. And to <coughs> Simulations that can be used for quantitative comparison with laser-driven plasma experiments must bridge the multi-scale physics from the fluid dynamic processes to the microscopic kinetic processes. And modeling these scales while also resolving uh, in velocity space can require billions of particles. So uh, the Blue Waters Fellowship gave me an allocation on Blue Waters that allowed me to perform these simulations. Uh, the largest simulations I performed used one to 2,000 nodes for about six wall clock hours and had over a billion particles. And also the fast response time of the Blue Waters team to my technical issues was very helpful in helping me to maximize my productivity on the machine. So our simulations are initialized as expanding plasma bubbles threaded by an azimuthal magnetic field. These simulations do not model the initial laser plasma interaction or magnetic field generation processes, but they do capture important features of the system, such as the finite size 
which allows particles to escape and the driven inflows. And here is the simulation domain over the experimental geometry. And we use open boundaries along the outflow direction to prevent the recirculation of escaping particles and radiation. And we match most of uh, the important plasma parameters directly to their laboratory values. And we observe that the overall evolution of the system is consistent with previous studies. As the bubbles expand, the magnetic field is compressed and a current sheet forms with a width on the order of the ion skin depth. And an electric field develops in the current sheet due to reconnection. And we also observe that the current sheet is unstable to the formation of plasmoids. And for the range of conditions simulated, we typically observe the formation of one to three plasmoids. So on the left shows the temporal evolution of the electron energy distribution for a typical simulation. And we observe the development of a high energy tail with an approximately power loss shape, here extending to around 50 times the initial thermal energy. And on the right shows the distribution of electron energies along the direction of the reconnection outflows, which shows energetic electrons both being emitted in the reconnection outflows, as well as at a, the location of the single plasmoid that forms in the simulation. And to um, understand the acceleration mechanism producing this high energy tail, we've tracked the detailed motion of the most energetic electrons in the simulation. And here we show the trajectories of two representative electrons plotted over the magnitude of the magnetic field. On the left shows the magnetic field at an early time and on the right at a later time after the plasmoid has formed. And the inlays show the particle's energy as a function of X position. And you see that in both cases, the electrons gain the majority of their energy in a narrow region as they interact with the X point which is where the magnetic field vanishes and the particle can be freely accelerated by the reconnection electric field. And in the example on the left, after being energized, the electron escapes the system. And in the example on the right, it is then directed into this plasmoid where it becomes trapped. And once trapped, it can further gain energy, but at a slower rate and more the other particle tracks that we've looked at also show that the energy gain from the direct acceleration by the reconnection electric field is much more significant than that inside the plasmoid. If we fit the low energy portion of the spectrum to a Maxwellian, we see that the remaining non-thermal component has, resembles a steep power law with an index around five. And we see that the high energy tail contains approximately 24% of the energy initially in the magnetic field and 1% of the electrons initially in the bubbles. And on the right, we show the energy spectra for a number of simulations with the same initial conditions, but differing initial magnetic fields. And we see that the maximum energy increases with the magnetic field, which is consistent with a picture that the reconnection electric field is energizing the particles. And our particle tracking results indicate that this power law distribution is a result of direct acceleration at the X points rather than by interaction with plasmoids. And a power law can result in this way as electrons spend a varied amount of time being accelerated by the X points before they're vected away. And because the electrons are being accelerated in the out of plane direction, which is not modeled in the 2D simulations, it's important to consider 3D effects. So we've performed full 3D simulations of expanding magnetized plasma bubbles. And here I'm showing an isocontour of the magnetic field in the bubble and plotted over this are the trajectories of the 1000 most energetic electrons colored by their energy. So they're starting here at the bottom then traveling upwards, being accelerated by the reconnection electric field. And we see that they're emitted in a fan-like profile, which is an important experimental signature that could be used to identify the electrons accelerated by reconnection. And be the finite size in the vertical direction will limit the maximum energy an electron can attain to the force from the reconnection electric field times the size of the bubbles. And this allows us to derive an estimate for the maximum electron energy in terms of the initial conditions, which could then be tuned in the experiments to maximize the particle acceleration. And so for current experiments, such as are performed at the Omega laser facility, for those conditions, we expect that electrons can be accelerated from 25 to 75 times the initial thermal energy. 
So these results clearly show that laser-driven plasmas can play an important role in the study of particle acceleration induced by reconnection, and this was published in, published in physical review letters this year. And as I mentioned previously, uh, particle and cell simulations, such as those we did for this reconnection study, are very computationally demanding due to the large number of simulation particles required. So we're also working on developing an an, a method that holds promise to improve on standard plasma simulation techniques by reducing noise and computational expense. And the foundation of our new method is that the simulation particles can be interpreted as the vertices of a mesh that traces the evolution of the distribution function in phase space. And interpolating between these tracer particles allows you to reconstruct the full distribution function, which allows physical quantities to be defined that are continuously defined in space, which retains fine scale detail that is lost when averaging over finite volumes using standard methods. And the, this allows a discretization using deformable phase space volume elements rather than fixed shape particles. And this new view can be used both to post-process uh, with data analysis and visualization of standard particle and cell simulations, as well as directly implemented in the simulation as an improved method for calculating the charge and current densities, which are then used to calculate the electromagnetic fields. So here is an illustration of how the new method works uh, in two-dimensional phase space. So on the top is the distribution function for a cold plasma oscillation where the vertical axis is velocity and the horizontal axis is position. And the dots here show the location of a finite number of simulation particles that sample this distribution function. And the bottom two plots show the charge density that would result if you deposited this charge onto a grid using a standard cloud and cell deposit or using our new method. And with the cloud and cell deposit, the particles have a finite width and only influence the charge density at their two nearest neighbor grid points, which when there are fewer particles than grid points results in a noisy charge density with sharp peaks at the particle locations. And with our new method, the charge is spread between the tracer particles over these stretchable line segments, which then results in a charge density that much more accurately represents the distribution function we want to model. And so we've compared the standard method versus the new method on a number of one-dimensional electrostatic test problems such as Landau damping, two-stream instability, and plasma oscillations. And we found that our new method can accurately model the, the physics of these test problems using fewer simulation particles. And here's an example of a pla cold plasma oscillation uh, phase space, velocity and position for the standard method versus our new method. And you see that the unphysical noise that res results from the grid is eliminated when using our new method. And the results of this one-dimensional study were published in the Journal of Computational Physics this year, and now we'd like to extend this to 2D and 3D electromagnetic plasma simulations. So before implementing the new method in OSIRIS, we want to use this as a post-processing tool for simulations performed with OSIRIS. So I've developed a parallel code to perform these calculations on Blue Waters. So here's an example showing the charge density of a 2D simulation of the Weibull instability. On the left, rendered using standard cloud and cell particles, and on the right, using our new method. And this uh, charge density was calculated on a grid with 16 times finer resolution in each direction compared to the resolution of the simulation. And you see that our new method reveals fine scale details such as these fluctuations longitudinal to the direction of the filaments. And after this initial post-processing study, the goal is to implement this new method directly in OSIRIS. So here are my conclusions. Laser-driven plasmas offer a new experimental platform for studying particle acceleration induced by reconnection. The non-thermal electrons gain their energy by direct acceleration from the reconnection electric field, and current experimental conditions can produce energies from 25 to 75 times the initial thermal energy. And our novel phase space interpolation method may reduce the noise and number of simulation particles required in particle and cell simulations. Thank you.